Hey all, this is part four. And we actually just talked about the few things in which to take note. While and for loops are pretty similar, string and arrays are pretty similar, and the concepts below are gonna work for strings and arrays, uh, while and for loops. Because we're mostly messing with the contents of the for loop as opposed to what the for loop is being used to iterate over. And also, a for loop and a while loop, as we've shown, can pretty much do the same things provided that you organize them properly. So here's a situation where we want to loop every other value. So, so far we've just been looping over every single one, and we do so by incrementing the i variable, or whatever our index variable is, uh, by one each time the for loop ends. So this one is going to be a little bit different. Instead of doing i plus plus, which is the same as i plus equals one, we're going to do i plus equals two. And what this is going to do is to increment the index variable by two each time. So if we run this one, we're going to see that we get uh, the current index increments by two each time, which allows us to visit every other element, which is nice. Now we've got some mixed restaurant data. So we're going to assume that the first element in the list is the name of the restaurant, and the element that follows that is always going to be the number of that restaurant. So let's say that we only wanted to log the names of the restaurants, and we're assuming that it starts with the name of a restaurant, what we can do is we could set up our for loop such that we, again, increment by two each time. And if we do that, we're only going to see the names of the restaurants outputted. So with that in mind, we're going to complete a function that takes one parameter, an array of elements, and logs every other one of its elements, beginning at index zero to the console. Your function should use a loop to log every other element from the beginning, skipping every other element, until either the end of the array or one shy of the end, uh, depending on odd or even length of the array passed, and then it should return nothing. Below is an example of the code running, assuming that you will have completed the described function, loop every other. Now, you'll notice that this doesn't say if you have to use a while loop or a for loop, and it's because I didn't put a test in there to test either one. And what we're showing is that it doesn't really matter if you use a for loop or a while loop in situations like this. So there's our function stub. There's the uh, two example test cases. And we're going to create a loop which iterates over every other element of the input array. I'm just going to use a for loop. i0, i is less than the array dot length. And I might actually change this to a while loop uh, after we get done. Just to, just to show that it's not that difficult of a concept and that other tutorials are kind of silly for focusing on it so much. We want to log every other element to the console, which we're actually doing by the for loop. So here, we just need to consider that we want to log whatever the value at array at i is, because i is being handled for us. i is going to go over every other one. So if we run this, we should get ac135. Now, let's change this to a while loop, just because that's what everybody always wants us to do. So a while loop is going to start with the index variable outside. It's going to create a condition that's identical to the i is less than array dot length. We're going to have the first line inside of the while loop be whatever we have as our, you know, the block. Then we're going to set i to be whatever i was plus 2. Now I'm going to comment out all of this, and we'll see that it does the exact same thing. Excellent. Go ahead and take this back, and let's make sure that I didn't accidentally put a test in here, which makes you use a, a while or a for loop. And we're in good shape. So again, this could be a while loop or a for loop, your choice. I'm probably going to use for loops just because... I don't know. I'm not really sure why I prefer for, prefer for loops compared to while loops. I think it might be because, no, no, to be honest, I'm really not sure. But I'm going to, so just as a heads up. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one.